We're palpating the parietal bone next. I'm just going to turn our model's head to the side here. So we're going to be outlining again its bony landmarks. There's not too many different landmarks that we're going to discuss, but we'll talk about where it's meeting some of the other bony edges. So I'm just going to go on top of the head and I'm locating where the frontal bone meets the parietal bones. And now I'm going down along the coronal suture right here. So the front part of the parietal bone is in this area here. I'm just gonna turn her head and face it downward. And it runs together, left and right, parietal bones until they meet the occipital bone in the back. So we have a landmark that kind of helps us identify where Bregma is in the front and Lambda is in the back. And then I'm going to have this lambdoidal suture that kind of runs down, so separating the occipital bone from the parietal bone in this location here. So the parietal bone, we'll bring our head back to the side here, runs down the majority of the way, but then it's going to be meeting up with the temporal bone, which is gonna be just above the ear in this area. However, the suture will not be palpable since it is underneath the temporalis muscle. So really the only bony landmark that we're gonna discuss for the parietal bone itself is the outline of the temporal fossa and the temporal lines, both superior and inferior. You're not going to be able to separate the temporal lines. So if you've already watched the frontal bone um, palpation, what I'm looking for is where the frontal bone comes down to the zygomatic bone right here. There's our little suture and this is the beginning of those temporal lines. So this is frontal bone, and then it's gonna round the corner and start to work its way back onto the parietal. So I'm gonna have my body continue clenching and releasing her jaw as I'm following these temporal lines. So the temporal lines will not be able to be separated. One is more the actual muscular fossa, but there's also some fascial connection over top of this muscle. So part of it is muscular attachment and the other part is going to be more a fascial attachment. So parietal portion of it, and then this temporal line is gonna drop down towards the ear. However, this part is going to be the temporal bone. So a big chunk of this muscle known as temporalis is covering the parietal bone as well as the frontal bone. And then when we get to it, we'll talk more about the temporal bone. So that really is everything that we need to discuss to do with the parietal bone.